So guys, before you get into the first episode of our new baby, mm-hmm. Not Another Relationship podcast, yeah. we have some bad news. Yeah. We have some real bad news. Like, we literally just finished filming uh, another episode today mm. and we actually forgot to film an intro for this first episode. Mm-hmm. So that's what this, this section was not meant to be this. Yeah, but, we had it all planned out. Yeah. But obviously because of the news that basically the session that we filmed today, all the files have corrupted. Yeah. Even session one, the files corrupted. Yeah. So both sessions now the files corrupted and he basically yeah. said to us, Yeah, you're gonna have to find a new studio. Yeah. So now that's now made us kind of hit a standstill. Because we now don't know when the next like episode is gonna come out. Yeah, so we need so, to find a new studio. And guys, the emphasis on finding a new another studio. Yeah. It's it's long, it's yeah. tough. So Yeah. Yeah, but the devil the devil's trying up, he's not gonna win, he's not gonna win, we're gonna work hard to find a new studio to yes. get out all the episodes like you guys support has been mad. It has been so so mad. Mm-hmm. Like we love you all. It's literally been crazy. So I'm gonna work even harder to make sure that this is not a stop. This is just yeah. a quick pause. We're gonna come back before we even know. We even before that time we'll come back. We even know the pause has happened. Yeah. So yeah, we hope you enjoy the first episode. Yes. It is a bit monotone. You know, we're a bit shy. Yeah, we're, we're shy, a bit shy to start. Yeah, we're actually very shy. In this first episode, mm-hmm. and obviously the topic we we're talking about is a bit deep. Yeah. So like the vibe. But yeah, the next episode of course is gonna still get into a bit more about the wedding. That wasn't mm-hmm. it. Yeah. But enjoy this little snippet for now because <laughs> yeah. there's still like more to come. Me. But yeah, if you episodes. if you're new here, yes, I'm Ad. and I'm Chem, yes. and this is our new podcast, not in our relationship podcast. Yeah. All things about relationships, love, and this untangling the difficulty of dating in this modern world. Yeah. So yeah, yeah we hope you enjoy this first episode, and we'll yes. see you then. Love you guys. <clears throat> so. <laughs> <laughs> Look at what us. are we doing here? Honestly, look <laughs> at us podcasting. Podcasting. Yeah, it's actually a wow. really exciting day. A very a really exciting, exciting day. day. Completely new environment. Literally new vibe. Like this is new for us, Literally. but I love it, and I'm very mm-hmm. excited for this new journey. Yeah, 100%. change always means good. Exactly, hundred mm-hmm. percent, man. But I think yeah. it was the right time because we're almost ten years in. I, I always feel like it's ten years already because I'm always I'm, I'm very excited for. Chem has been saying we're <laughs> nearly ten years since the whole year. <laughs> we need to get to nine first, but yeah, yeah we're, we're nearly there. To be fair, like mm-hmm. it's way closer than yeah. Mm-hmm. It's very close now. Mm-hmm. I think it's just the perfect time to let's have a conversation. I feel like we've mm-hmm. gone through so many things to get to this point, yeah. and so many people ask us like, "How do you do it? <laughs> How do you make it so far?" But we actually need to reflect yeah. and yeah, let you guys know how it's been. Because low key, I, I I don't even know how we did it sometimes. Honestly. Like, honestly. we just got here. I think we kind of need to just really have a conversation about yeah. little things. I think there's some stuff I haven't asked you, so a lot of stuff you're not asked me. Yeah, we just need to be really transparent because to be fair, when we started obviously doing our content, that was five years into the relationship. Mm. So the five years before that, you guys didn't really know much about us and, yeah. you know, our journey. So yeah, it would be nice to like discuss and yeah, be very, very transparent. Yeah, very transparent. <laughs> I feel like transparency is always yeah, good. Definitely. For both of us as well. Not definitely. just obviously all of you guys, but for us as well. There's, yeah. There's a lot of learning that we can still do. Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. You can you're always learning really and truly. Yeah. But yeah, man, this episode straight to it. Straight, straight to, to it. it. Like I think the biggest the biggest thing that obviously we've gone through that we haven't been actually really spoken about publicly mm-hmm. is obviously our wedding. Yeah. Like that's just real it's the wedding. Yeah. <laughs> literally. Like, like we've obviously had a little life update. We did that on our YouTube obviously. Mm. And yeah, but we didn't really go into detail because at that point to be fair, we we're still healing and going mm. through the process. Yep. But I feel like now we're in a better place to actually reflect and just be transparent, explain like some like how we how we are right now, to be fair. Yeah. And that's the main thing. Like we just obviously wanna express how we're feeling, how things have gone, where we are now and just yeah. Yeah, I feel like after the wedding, it was a good three, four months. Like that period, Mm -hmm. it was just so weird. Like there was just a dark cloud (laughs) above us. Honestly. And that's not even like our relationship. Our relationship was good. good. Our love was at all time high. But in terms of just normal life, I feel like there was just such a dark cloud. Yeah. Like a lot had changed after, like literally after 25th, Mm. a lot around us changed, like a lot. And it was just a lot to deal with. And just, we were really shocked with some stuff to be fair. 
And yeah, like we just weren't in the best place, to be at honest. All. Like we weren't in the at best all. place at all. Like my birthday came up at the wrong time. The wrong time. Like the wrong oh time. I turned 25 and I was thinking, this is not the time to be happy. <laughs> like I'm not happy. But it is what it is. And honestly, yeah, man. But how are you feeling though right now? How am I feeling? Seven months. Seven months this week is what yeah. I'm recording this. Seven mm-hmm. months this week since we got married. And I feel good. Like I feel happy. Like mm-hmm. it's, there's a lot of emotion. That we that we have right now, a lot yeah. of things that we're developing, and I think right now I feel good. But the being able to now look back and mm-hmm. really reflect on what happens, I think that's the main that's the main thing. That's the main progress that I think I've made, but I think we both made because yeah. after the wedding, like we didn't reflect as much on the good things because yeah. there was so much bad things that happened that, yeah. that we just constantly kept thinking I'm about. Thinking about yeah. But right now, I think I'm at peace. Yeah, I think I'm at peace. What yeah, about you? yeah. No, I'm definitely at peace, to be fair, 100%. Obviously, it is still, there is still some random points. I'm just like, wow. But then I just get peace again. Like, I feel like, you know, it is what it is. Mm. Like, and I just think about the positive and just think, you know what? At the end of the day, like, I literally had the best day on the 25th. Like, that I was genuinely happy and excited. So, regardless of how things went before and after and during, like, it's done now. And at the end of the day, like, the wedding, everything that happened going towards our wedding the aim was us getting married so oh, yeah. that happened that's and it. that's literally still me makes, makes us so happy so yeah man but honestly like a lot of people disappointed me a lot of things just i just wasn't expecting a lot mm. and i think because with the wedding we were so stressed like planning in like basically six months a wedding mm. two weddings yeah it's not easy it's not easy so a lot of the times that we were stressed and like people were like stressing us or things were happening we just had to go like okay we've got to email a vendor right now like yeah. next we just didn't have time to think too much about it mm-hmm. i think that's why after the wedding we did now yeah. And especially because honeymoon was like a nice part of a bubble. But when you came back from honeymoon, mm. we were now like, okay. Yeah. yeah. Like life really slowed down. That really yeah. gave us the time to think about this person did this. Yeah. Wait, this person actually chills like this. Like it was yeah. just so much reflection, so much negative reflection that yeah. just put us in a dark space. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah. like we said, after January, after praying and fasting, after all of yeah. that, we've come out better. So much better. So much better. Like a lot of healing was actually needed mm-hmm. that, I actually kind of was like just pushing away like it's what it is, it's what it is. But sometimes, no, let's actually get into what it is. Yeah. And I actually needed to. And yeah, like I'm definitely in a way better space, way, way better, better space. Way better but space. Um, yeah, but we need to reflect though. We need to reflect. Mm. And to point, it all starts, no, you all start because so many different things happen at different times. Yeah. But the one thing I'll never forget is your convo with your dad. Yeah. That 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 was <laughs> such a such an interesting interaction. Yeah. And obviously, again, for me, like, it was just weird to observe because again I, I can't butt in or i can't come in too much in terms of like your family side because again when you're an in-law when you're the partner you kind of have to let the family start its business mm-hmm. but that conversation I, yeah. yeah charles about to grab the phone <laughs> i'm about to take the phone and be like Wait, listen yeah phone. just like calm down <laughs> yeah that situation was very interesting and it's funny because this is one thing like when chem um when i knew that like okay the next stages we're gonna get married i always knew in the back of my head that i was so excited to be engaged but i knew that there's gonna be a lot of things that i'm gonna have to deal with along that journey mm. and one of them was obviously like my dad's like yeah. the relationship i have with him and whether yeah. i'm gonna involve him and what's gonna happen and i was just so nervous about that mm-hmm. and literally like so when chen proposed to me i was so happy then i remember oh my gosh am i inviting him am i not inviting him like yeah. what's what's gonna happen here mm-hmm. and obviously like africans your parents especially for the bride side like your dad is actually very heavily involved mm-hmm. in like all of the traditional stuff yeah and I now needed to decide, like, what's happening there? Like, am I just going to completely leave that? Mm. Or am I just, like, I just wasn't sure at all. So anyway, I did decide that, you know what? Everybody deserves grace and everybody yeah. deserves a chance. So I just said, you know what? I'm going to, because we have been building our relationship, obviously, from, like, when I was 18. Yeah. So I thought, yeah, I'm just going to invite him. But... I'm still gonna have my boundaries so he's still not gonna walk me down the aisle i still don't want him to do a first dance with me basically he's gonna be as good as a guest Mm. but you're my dad yeah so yeah that was obviously telling that to an african man is it's not gonna be an easy easy. conversation but at the end of the day that was just what it is like Mm. i didn't make these decisions i'm the child at the end of the day so like 
how I've decided to do things is based on my parent. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like I just we had a conversation. Obviously, I sent him like the save the date. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he knew I was getting married. I, like I actually called him, and it, I actually was pressured to call him by a family member. But anyway, <laughs> I called him on like FaceTime. Like, and I think that's the first ever time that I even oh. video called him. Like, he didn't even yeah. answer. Like, then was like, you're not expecting this person yeah, to be video yeah, calling yeah. you. And obviously, like, um, um, yeah, like, not FaceTime, like, WhatsApp called him on video. So she showed him, like, oh, yeah, I got engaged, blah, 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 whatever. But, yeah, so then I sent him to save the day to obviously let him know, like, yeah, this is the day of the wedding, blah, blah, blah. So he didn't respond to me. Then, remember, he actually um, called me. Yes. So he's actually one of them type of people. When you see that he's blue ticked the message, don't take it to heart. Yeah. He's probably going to call you. Yeah. Cool. So he called me, like, I think a day or so later. And when he called me... um yeah like he just will see his energy was very interesting interesting. and i can i'm always like someone that's looking for energy like trying to see the vibe so that i'm prepared Mm -hmm. i do not like not it's valid because like your whole life he's obviously hurt your feelings in terms of his involvement Mm -hmm. so you're very guarded in terms of his approaches 100 percent. so his approach now you're already like hmm what's happening what's happening yeah so anyway so yeah we had that conversation and then yeah like he obviously i just expressed as i said that yeah like this is what the plan is so obviously he actually asked me like what's his role in this so i had to be like what do you mean because i had to really let like find out what do you actually mean Mm. because i didn't want to like infer that he thinks is he does he think that he's gonna start like that i need anything from him because i actually didn't like i didn't Mm. need any contribution i didn't want any Mm. financial support i just i was just like saying yeah you can come yeah but that was about it and yeah like i just um i think he he kind of expected way, way more, more yeah way more yeah. than w- that was going to be permitted because yeah. like you said the involvement wasn't where it was you started a relationship only a couple of years ago yeah so all throughout your life it was just your mom so you yeah. know your mom is your rock your, mm-hmm. your pillar yeah so of course your mom will have a pedestal a at the pedestal wedding. at the wedding but and that's where we now uh, had to had a little clash because he obviously wanted to of course he wanted to like First of all, it started with the invitations. Like, he wanted his surname to be on the invitations. Yeah. And obviously, that's just wild because I don't even have his surname. Like, <laughs> my mom changed my surname years ago, like, before I could even talk. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, that was wild. But again, yeah. he just obviously wanted to assert some sort of, like, mm-hmm. dominance and, like, some mm-hmm. control on the situation as, mm-hmm. like, the father of the bride. But mm-hmm. this is why I was just... This is why this was something I was thinking about prior to being engaged because yeah. I just knew how it's going to be and how it's going to look. Because even, like, some family members were saying to me, like, how can you not have him do this and that i'm thinking i don't have a relationship with him like yeah yeah, he's my dad but i don't have a relationship with him there's no way my mom's gonna sit down and watch him give me away how can he give me away when he's never had me honestly like that just doesn't make sense it never made sense so yeah anyway we had that conversation obviously he went left (laughs) so (laughs) went left yeah but to be fair respectfully left it wasn't there wasn't any rudeness Mm -hmm. but i just had to be it got to a point where i had to just remind him that this decision on all of this came from you yep I was a child. I didn't decide to, you know, let these things get to this. So, yeah, you have to respect and understand where I'm coming from. Mm-hmm. And obviously, respectfully, when it starts to, when you're not respecting my mom now, yeah. now you're about to get uninvited. Yeah. Now you're going to get uninvited because I'm mm-hmm. very protective of my mom. And I was just like, yeah. So anyway, that conversation, he basically left it at a, as a, let's let's follow this up later type of thing yeah. and that later didn't come didn't it's been come. a year later and i haven't spoken to him which is the maddest thing because again you showed grace mm-hmm. you wanted to invite him you wanted them you want you basically mm-hmm. wanted to be the one look, i extended all of that yeah exactly and he again he then basically scorned it he basically said like look it's he just wanted to say too like, much yeah and it's like can't take a chill pill bro yeah that's so that was literally but and obviously that's that's i think a culture thing as well like we'll, we'll get into that in another another episode. another episode but yeah like that was just i honestly just had to respectfully leave that there so obviously my say i'll say if the dates were sent when somebody confirmed that they're coming or not mm. if you're confirmed you're coming you'll get the invite yeah he obviously didn't confirm anything else didn't say anything to me he knew mm. when the wedding was because he also got the date yeah. <laughs> didn't say anything else to me the years passed and obviously we're married now and haven't, haven't spoken to him so literally it's been a year then since you spoke yeah. to him yeah and it's just honestly like i don't really feel anything at all this is one of the situations in the wedding that actually wasn't that bad yeah. it wasn't as much of a bad hit because i never i was always guarded with him anyway mm-hmm. so him doing anything it wasn't i don't feel like i was disappointed because yeah. i don't think he's ever like i think it was the closure you needed in regards to the yes relationship. and where i want the relationship to go and yep. especially because i know that like obviously guys we're married now like life's gonna mm-hmm. happen we're gonna have kids and i can't have like 
I still I don't want to be like this with like like a bit weird with their grandparent. Mm-hmm. So I'd rather just have boundaries and everything set prior to that yeah. than having them know that oh yeah I'm not talking to your granddad today. I'm not talking exactly. like I don't have time for that at all. That's exactly. just what I'm at. I just don't have time. So mm-hmm. yeah. And that's the thing with boundaries as well. Like life teaches you who needs boundaries and yeah. who who can be one length away, who needs to be ten mm-hmm, lengths away. Mm-hmm. And again, like when you set boundaries, not that you don't love the person was that you have to love them from afar. From afar, yeah. Because in your important times, the times you need people, they'll show you like if you can not even just trust them, but if if they can put you in a situation where you can feel hurt, you're yeah. gonna have to take a step back. You're gonna have to stick yeah. Or else you'll consist- consistently be hurt. Yep. And it's just not fair on your peace, your mental state, and you just cannot, you just can't afford to go through that. Literally, mm-hmm. like even me, like I have a cousin, like my very, very first cousin. Oh, like, yeah. He, he, we literally grew up together. Like he's always been around. Like he's yeah. always been the number one cousin in our family. Mm-hmm. And like, any, like anyone, like he can sometimes be here or there. But when push comes to shove, he's there. It's gonna show up. You know what yeah. I'm trying to say, like, there's a lot of stuff my family's been through, and he's always been there. So of course, wedding time. I had the same expectation but for me personally as well i'm the type of person that yeah i i, I don't give he people doesn't expect anything. <laughs> anything i've learned a lot from chip <laughs> <laughs> he does not let nobody hurt him yeah nobody the only person as well that can probably hurt me or <laughs> ruin the expectation is and like for real like if i'm heartbroken it's her <laughs> I'm heartbroken. but now for real though because i just know that the more you give out the, you, you open up way more opportunities to get hurt to get hurt so yeah. obviously I, I limit how much I fully give up yeah cool so for him now obviously after I proposed to Anne he was li- he literally called me straight away he was yeah. saying how proud he was of me yeah. like he's there for me no matter what whatever mm-hmm. I need he'll mm-hmm. bring it like he was letting me know like for this wedding he is here mm-hmm. and I was like cool yeah, like, thanks for that like, yeah like I, the thing is well I wasn't expecting bear but I was yeah. like I was thinking, ah, right, cool, yeah, he, he, he'll, he'll pound me, he'll pound me. Yeah. But it's just, it's just one of those ones because as time went on, and obviously he has kids as well, my niece and nephew, I knew um, I wanted them to be our ring bearer and flower girl because it's perfect, perfect age. And just, yeah. they're, just, they're just part of our wedding. It's happy part of our wedding. Yeah. So obviously I let him know and he was saying, thank you so much. Like he was gassed, mm-hmm. like he was saying, like it's an honor for them yeah. to be a part. And obviously that gave me a bit of confidence. So I let him know what to get. For them to wear and i was just thinking cool i'll, I'll leave it i'll leave it to that um I'll, I'll catch up with him a little bit just mm-hmm. to make sure things are going well mm-hmm. but as time went on when i started to message him he he started to not rep- it's hard to explain because with me i understand that when i send you a message i don't respect i don't expect you to reply straight away yeah, like yeah. the only person i expect <laughs> a straight reply from is and my wife if i'm being honest Literally. like obviously if she's busy doing something i know yeah. you can reply but if i message her the next five minutes i expect to reply because we, we just always have to be in communication, yeah, communication. But in terms of anybody else like i understand like life is life in it you might mm-hmm. reply the next day mm-hmm. but with him it starts to become the next couple of days and it's like okay what's happening yeah and i started to have to chase him and i and I still gave grace because when I chased him, it wasn't even a, it wasn't adapting. I was just trying to get a bit of, a bit more information because yeah. I'm now going back and forth in terms of what mm-hmm. I'm planning on the wedding and like making sure everything's okay with him. Mm-hmm. So now it got to the point where I was literally now chasing him. Like yeah. he would, he would literally just stop replying to me. Like that's mm-hmm. it. He literally went, went quiet on me. And I'm thinking, why are you going quiet on me? Just say something. Like yeah. just at least let me know the progress at least let me know mm-hmm. if you can't do something and i think that's another thing that people need to understand where we understand that it's a big moment and we we understand that you have an expectation there's nothing wrong with letting us know if the expectation is too much yes 110 <laughs> percent yeah i feel like that's what we went through a lot this yeah. last year it's like people just didn't want to just be straight up and just straightforward like you know what i'm not actually able to commit or you know what you've asked me to do this i can't do it i can't Mm -hmm. i can't submit to this role Mm -hmm. but just people just didn't want to do that instead they'll just want to disappoint i don't know (laughs) and i feel like i don't know like by not communicating by kind of letting things like go a bit blurry yeah the only thing that's going to help the situation it's not because we're the only ones picking up the pieces you're not you're clearly not picking up the pieces so we have to pick it up which is more stress for us Mm -hmm. So now, as we got closer to the trad and the white wedding, that was when things went overdrive. Like yeah. that August, that month of August, I was literally doing mileage. Yeah. So much mileage. Oh and goodness. I just didn't have time to be chasing mm-hmm. my cousin to try yeah. just to ask him, like, 
what's going on with the their outfits, what's going on with this, even for the trad as well, because yeah. with the material, mm-hmm. we had to use a certain amount of money that was for the white wedding. Mm-hmm. But because we wanted to get all the trad material out of the way, we just used it and bought it. And then obviously when people had the money ready, they'll send it back. Send it back. So yeah. for him, he obviously said that him and his kids and his wife would wear it, which is fine. Mm-hmm. So come to it now. Literally, it's funny as well. Whenever I needed something from him, that's when his replies went slow as well. So for me, I'm just that looking at it like, now, okay, now you're actually trying to be obstructive. Yeah. Because like, yeah. you're replying when I, when it's not that deep. But when I actually need something, that's when the replies are taking five, six, yeah. seven minutes. Yeah. Yeah, like, you know what I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. So as we got towards the trad now, I remember the day before the trad, I was I literally went to like four or five different places that day because I was doing so many things. And I remember I was with my dad as well. We went to the hall to drop bare stuff. And I got back home now. I had stuff to do at home as well. <laughs> and I literally, something just hit me. I just felt... Is my cousin in London because they live in Birmingham, and I feel like I, I signed this him saying, if they're in London, they should be their dad's his dad's house, my my, my uncle. But Sam was telling me he's not there, so obviously I sent another message. I didn't get a reply, so I literally said to my family, look, if he's here, he's here. If he's not, he's not. I'm actually tired now. <laughs> yeah. Because the wedding is literally tomorrow. The trial is tomorrow. If you're not here, you're not here. Cool. So my sisters, they could see how annoyed I was. I was pissed. So they called him bare times, and he finally picked up. And obviously they got onto him and then guess what? He calls me. So then I'm not looking at situations like, so you could have replied to me all this time. Mm-hmm. You just were mm-hmm. willingly deciding to not reply. Yeah. Knowing the stress yeah. I'm under. Yeah. Because we're going to get into what you went through, but I'm supporting you for everything you're going through. Mm-hmm. So I'm now trying to support you as well as focus on stuff like this. Like, and then I'm now doing all these runarounds. Like I, I knew I couldn't break down or else everything would be done. Like, cause you're obviously broken. I mm-hmm. cannot break or else everything goes mm-hmm. just goes kaput. So like I think as a guy it's like it's so easy. It's just in normal life as well, like with mental health and just trying to be strong. It's just you kinda of just have to forget about how you, what you're feeling. Yeah. And yeah. just keep tracking. Yeah. So like literally, like I was just literally on such a tunnel vision. Mm-hmm. Especially because my cousin he, my cousin literally said to me for the trad he's bringing bare drinks he's gonna <laughs> run the bar like and guys before I tread you know when it comes to the drinks it's very political yeah it's, very, it's not as 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 organised obviously you can get a company but if you're doing it yourself it's very political yeah so we knew we need something we can trust and mm-hmm. there's certain instructions that mm-hmm. had to be passed down but with him like he knew he's, he's, he's done it before at a different parties so he knew that yeah I'm gonna run it I'll make sure it's good yeah so now when I got a phone call from him, he literally said to me, ah, oh, I'm so sorry. We can't come to the trad. It's the car problem. I'm just thinking, car problem? Like, you're telling me today is when you found a car problem. Today, right now, as in, is this is like 9, 10 p.m. As in, you're, even almost, you're almost about to sleep for the next day. So if you didn't get a call from my sisters, would you have ever told me? Would you even give me the grace of telling me on the day? Yeah. But it was not showing up. So I just I just knew from that point I, ha- I have to take a step back. Yeah. I realized that I gave too much. Mm-hmm. My expecta- my expectation barrier opened, and I yeah. knew. You see, this, this is, is why, why <laughs> I protect myself because yeah. you just open yourself up to a lot of disappointment. Mm-hmm. So from that mm-hmm. moment, the barrier I had with him is is it just it's gone up. Yeah, like yeah. that's just what it is now. And yeah. I was unfortunate that. It's always the people closer to you that force you to put boundaries. Yeah, that's the worst part. And I think that's what has actually helped with our healing, though. Yeah. It actually has helped a lot because boundaries are needed. Like, you don't need boundaries in an unhealthy way. Like, they're actually more healthy to me anyway than mm. unhealthy. The problem is that sometimes you just don't want them to come from a negative situation. You just yeah. want them to come from more like just natural life. Like, yeah. okay, you live in Manchester now. Obviously, like, you're not going to be able to just jump for anybody. But <laughs> literally, like, literally. yeah, like obviously following the wedding, there's a lot of boundaries that I've had to put up with some people just for my peace and just for the sake of like, the hurt was just too much for me to allow myself to get vulnerable again mm-hmm. to experience any other hurt. Mm-hmm. So yeah, obviously like coming up to the wedding, like, I I would say that in the family, respectfully, <laughs> I am the fixer. Like yeah. I'm the one that if anyone's arguing or beefing, like I'm gonna fix it. Or I'm gonna try anyway my best to mend things. Mm-hmm. Or like I don't really argue with my siblings at all. Like mm-hmm. to be honest, like no, like I don't really argue with them. So yeah, but obviously the wedding, like yeah, there was some issues that arose, and I just felt like with the wedding because the wedding was very important to me. Like 
I haven't really witnessed like good love stories really. Yeah. So this was very personal to me in terms of like I just didn't want anything, any little crack that I felt coming, I wanted to patch it up quickly. Yeah. I didn't want to let it like crack into anything bigger than something that I couldn't fix anymore. Yeah. So yeah, like I just any little situation I really wanted to patch it up. Mm-hmm. So obviously I felt like it would be best to like, basically one of my siblings like disappointed me. So I now sent a message to all my siblings to basically say, guys, honestly, I just don't want to stress this period. Like just communicate with me and let me know what, what you're saying. Like, are you in to really be supportive or are you not? Cause yeah. I really need support mm-hmm. and you guys are literally my immediate support system. Mm-hmm. So I need you guys. Like, just let me know from now. Like yeah. I'm willing to, it's completely fine. Like well, I won't be upset if you let me know now. Mm-hmm. So that obviously then I can also place my expectations. Like I'll yeah. know that, you know what? they're dealing with this even if it's just life that they're dealing with because again with our wedding like yeah it's our wedding but life still goes on for everybody so if there's anything that's going on in people's lives like they know that they may not be able to commit to like being supportive then at least i'm aware of that and i won't be as her but yeah anyway that ended up going left left so left oh my days (laughs) literally that went left and like i just yeah it ended up being a situation of i guess people just took it the wrong way and I don't know like it was just very confusing to me at, for a long time because i just felt like what i was trying to mitigate i was mm. just i was like trying to do this from a place of like an honest good place yeah. like i was trying to make sure that my relationship with my siblings and stuff stayed good like i just mm. wanted it to be in a good place i didn't want anything to ruin anything but um yeah so obviously that went left like they ended up not speaking to me for like two months yeah. And obviously that two months was not easy, like because obviously there was like back and forth conversations with like the one mediator in the family that there was to obviously like discuss and say this and obviously just a lot started going on and then an innocent message that was literally like okayed by some people yeah. became like the worst thing I could have done mm-hmm. when it was literally something that I was doing for my own wedding. Yeah. Anyway, so that just went very, very left. Yeah, and I feel like being your husband to be mm-hmm. is so it's so hard because again it's your family i can't get involved i can't speak or well you did try to get I, involved I, to be fair I, at some point because it got to it got really bad so you got wanted to really bad yeah but again i can't come with energy i no, have to come not. with what they allow me to say or allow mm-hmm. me to like step on yeah, step yeah. On. i can't yeah. fully say my two yeah, pets. Yeah. so again it's difficult to fully like process the situation mm-hmm. so like again as your husband to be it was so hard seeing you basically like wasting away like this is this is literally finishing you yeah and i can't do anything about it mm-hmm. like you know that that was so difficult for me like yeah. that was the hardest part about last mm-hmm. year watching mm-hmm. you break down and i had to kind of just hope and pray that it improves that's yeah, basically what basically, I like I do. basically and obviously because of the situation there was stubbornness on both sides like for me i saw it as i haven't done anything wrong and yeah the ever the event is mine like this is my wedding so i haven't done anything wrong like how yeah. am i doing anything for protecting my wedding or just trying to like set the tone for my wedding mm. but obviously again like there's just always stubborn there's obviously being i'm like the youngest but like, second youngest so it's never really gonna again like yeah. african culture like it's very much like you don't say certain things or you don't mm-hmm. do certain things mm-hmm. but i honestly like the message i sent like was not rude it wasn't a place of like badness at all it yeah. just honestly was a play it was just trying to make sure that there was peace during the process but yeah anyway long story short <laughs> <laughs> it ended up going left and obviously i had one day particularly when i just really broke yeah. down like scary i day. had gone through so much of because now i started thinking wait am i mad like am i crazy yeah. like mm-hmm. what did i do wrong like what's why is what two months like mm-hmm. why are we not speaking like what's the issue here yep. But anyway, so yeah, I ended up breaking down. Like I remember I was coming back from work and yeah, like I'm not a drinker. Like me nah. and Chem, we drink, of course, like if it's like events For or fun, like really. social drinking or a little yeah. wine glass on a Friday or something, <laughs> but not anything like drink, drink, drink. We don't just drink for fun, basically. Yeah. So yeah, and this particular day, like I literally just went to the shop on my way from, from work and then yeah, just basically got two bottles of alcohol and i made my way home didn't tell chem nothing bearing yeah. my me and chem are always messaging yeah didn't tell him nothing and then went home and then literally drank till i didn't even know and i hate vomiting i hate the idea of getting i know my limits basically i mm-hmm. hate that but i got to a point where i just drank i just didn't care i just was drinking put the music so loud playing some depressing music yeah <laughs> the music so loud and i was just i was just like you know what like since i just basically stopped caring about myself because i felt mm-hmm. like i wasn't feeling any care coming back 
towards me so i'm thinking why am i caring about myself then yeah. because if nobody else can see it then that doesn't make sense like why mm. am i caring about myself yeah and yeah i just obviously like broke down it was such a disappointing point for me to be honest because i don't do this like i'm very strong i would say and yeah it just got to a breaking point really and that's the thing for me that was the most dramatic part about yeah. last year that's why whenever someone says like 2023 on my days got married it must have been an amazing year i always say 2023 is probably one of my worst years ever yeah like, the only good part was, was literally, literally when we said i do yeah everything else was bad but seeing you like that mm -hmm. was the most heartbreaking like thing for me yeah. because literally you're my wife to be yeah. and i'm now seeing you at the point of you literally do not care about your life anymore yeah. and obviously we, we try to lean on each other but mm -hmm. it got to a point where your love for me it wasn't enough to, to match the pain you're experiencing yeah because when i when i came home i i was out i don't know I, I didn't even know what to say yeah. when i say the music was blasting mm. it was going crazy like i know there were two particular songs that they're bangers but <laughs> but obviously <laughs> the lyrics are a bit <laughs> the lyrics are a bit somehow especially if you're feeling the type of way so yeah. they're, they're the worst songs to listen to when yeah. you're feeling that mm. and obviously and i walk in i'm mm -hmm. thinking what is going on yeah i literally run to her and she's literally like just saying she doesn't care anymore no one cares about me so i don't care about myself i don't care what happens to me i'm thinking whoa, whoa. I'm, I'm literally breaking down crying now because i'm thinking like I, like like forget them just focus on me and she's literally saying like doesn't matter like no one cares about me mm -hmm. like it's just you feel nothing mm -hmm. and for you to say you feel nothing that's mm -hmm. now the point where i'm like wow yeah like this this wedding has actually has gone ruined our lives now. like, yeah. like yeah. how can we how how do we get to this how point how do we get here literally it was just really? such a traumatic time. Like, yeah. I remember I was trying to get the, the drink away from Anne. She was fighting me. I was trying to lower the music. She was fighting me. She just didn't care. And this is valid because that, mm -hmm. you're just going through so much pain. Yeah. And it was so hard for me not being able to fix that. Yeah. Like, it was just a lot, guys, honestly. But obviously, after that, I did end up having, like, a conversation with my siblings. And we did fix things. And I honestly did leave it there because yeah. I just wanted peace. Like, I was tired of the stress. So, usually, I'm not going to lie. I am someone that holds grudges. But I honestly dropped everything. Like, after that conversation we all had, mm. I left it there. Like, you know what? It's done. All is forgiven of, on both sides or whatever. Let's move forward now. This wedding is literally, like, how many months away now? Yeah. So, yeah. So, one sibling in particular, like... I really, we really sorted it out basically. Another yeah. sibling, it still was a bit, because I don't think there was some accountability on that side. Yeah. And I think that's what is sometimes an issue. Like the other sibling obviously understood where I was coming from. And that's all mm. I wanted. I just I wanted see. someone to just understand where I'm coming from. Like I, I meant yeah. no harm. Like I love you guys. You guys are my siblings. Mm. But yeah, so the other sibling obviously, it now just ended up being another continuous issue with them. Mm. And next thing we know, our registry came, they weren't there. Yeah. They were meant to, be there. meant to be there. Literally, like, sent the postcode. Like, I remember, like, five minutes before I left. And it, it was so weird because when we got there, obviously, our registry was very intimate, literally mm. close family and Closest friends. Closest family and friends, yeah. And, yeah, like, when I when I got there, I was late. I was literally, like, two minutes or something late to the registry. I mm. got there. And I even thought that she would have been there. Yeah. And, um, yeah, when I got there now, I was now, like, waiting. Like, I know that I'm going to hear the door open of, like, someone, them coming in late or whatever. Yeah. But I just knew, yeah, yeah, they're coming, they're though. Coming. Registry finishes. Nothing. <laughs> We're now taking pictures outside doing the confetti. Nothing. After the registry, me and Chem even had our private photo shoot. Yeah. And the family went to my other sibling's house to have like, we had basically a little get, get together. together like just a little food. Just yeah. just a little quick celebration. Nothing serious. But, yeah. and yeah, that sibling Nothing. still didn't show. So yeah. now obviously everyone was like, where is she? Like, what's happening? What's happened? And I'm honestly, that day I actually felt a lot of peace. And mm. I think because of how stressed and where I had got to before, I was not willing to get back to there. Yeah. So I thought, you know what? Any disappointments, any hurt, any sadness, it's fine. I'm actually fine. in a good place today. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just left it. And I also had got to a point of, you know what? It is what it is. Yeah. Like, I, the, clearly, like, this is a choice now. Mm -hmm. When it comes to people disappointing us and mm -hmm. all the things we went through, I think what you said, the key word was accountability. Yeah. A lot of the time, you can have a disagreement, you can give someone grace, yeah. and that grace is for them to literally take their accountability yeah. or at least try and make amends. I feel like you d you'd think that what you went through, you'll be the bridezilla. You were like, you were literally being the most peaceful bride because you mm -hmm. kept giving chances. I kept, like, kept giving you chances. literally kept giving chances. You're mm -hmm. fine for people. You literally mm -hmm. kept giving people opportunity to at least make amends or to try yeah, and make or things try better. and make things better. But, but I feel like 
it just it felt was like mainly me was doing the yeah the moving and it just felt like how can i be moving something i didn't break exactly. i didn't like mess anything up here but i'm the one fixing but yeah so literally like that was just a really sad time because obviously at that point anyway when she, when she didn't come to the registry i just felt like you know what like this is a very important time like yes it's not the big wedding yes mm. it's not the big trad mm. but this is still the legal point like yeah. we don't have to do the big two weddings yeah. like this is the legal wedding well, like, this is, here. the wedding, process, the is wedding done. process is done like this yeah. is the legal part and it still was very important but mm-hmm. anyway so i basically decided from that point no more communication i just can't mm. be asked i'm not even in a place to talk and i remember we actually lost our videographer yeah so now i was like yeah there's some real issues some here real issues. the registry is done mm-hmm. you haven't showed up i heard yep. obviously whatever their excuse was and it was just mm-hmm. like it's fine like honestly it was actually fine it's like mm-hmm. i felt no way i was just like you know what it's okay like at this point i didn't expect really yeah. anything better I was like, it's fine, it's whatever. Not to them personally, but within myself, I just was like, you know, I didn't want to hear anything. And I also wasn't in a place to have that discussion. Yeah. So I just left it. And obviously that, again, went worse. <laughs> like, ended up being a situation. Obviously, the bridal shower came as well. Then I just was hearing that they're not willing to attend, obviously, the other two weddings either. And that was now where I was just thinking, wow. Like, yeah. this is basically based on the fact that I'm not ready to have a conversation so now you're gonna dig deeper Mm -hmm. and do something worse like i i never understood i just don't know how that works but Mm -hmm. again like no one's perfect in like looking back on it now obviously at the time i was very upset about it Mm -hmm. but looking back at it's like you know what like some people actually deal with things differently and Mm -hmm. i cannot expect and i emphasis on this yeah cannot expect people to do things how you would do it yeah then we're all different people for a reason completely and i feel like that's the growth we also made. Obviously, mm-hmm. we gave grace. We yeah. have we we did we gave so much. A grace. lot of grace, like a again, lot. there is sometimes on our part. Maybe we should have just gave in. Like maybe we should have just gave in mm-hmm. to help things run smoother. But end of the day, like it was our wedding. We can be a little bit selfish. We can kind of be like, no, you did this, so you need to fix it. Because why why do you the bride have to fix? Be the bigger person, cause. especially yeah, multiple that's times, multiple as well. times as well. That's the situation because the first time I see the first situation where like I wasn't speaking, we weren't speaking for a couple months. I was the one that had to come mm-hmm. towards. Like I just had to be like, okay, mm-hmm. cool, what's happening here? And now again, I thought, yeah, I'm not doing this again. At this point, whose wedding is this? Like this is literally July. The red shoes in July. The, the red shoes in July. Yeah, we were at the point of like all extreme burnout. burnout. There was no time. Literally the day after the registry, we had our um our pre wedding pictures. Yeah. Like, literally the next day, yeah. It was just constantly on go. We had I had my yeah. stag do like the following week. You had yeah, your hand do the following do. week. Yeah. There was just back to back. There was no happening. time, honestly, for conversations on like especially things that have passed now. The registry's done now. There's no point even communicating it. Literally. Like I know what why you could okay, it's fine. It's whatever. Yeah. Obviously I'm not even gonna say obviously what the excuse was because that's just yeah like we're not i'm not even trying to make this like a bash this is honestly it's just us bash- just reflecting on things in it yeah. like this is not bashing anybody but it's just it was obviously really sad like that did burn a lot mm. because it just felt like after everything that had happened the f- previous couple months for this to happen now mm-hmm. and for you to even dig deeper and now say you're not coming to the following events yeah it just felt like wow but again i obviously still decided to keep them on the guest list yeah because i just knew that if I now actually remove your name from the guest list, yeah. I'm now going to be the bad guy. Exactly. Even though you said you're not coming. Exactly. Or you said that you want your name removed. Mm-hmm. Like. And again, it shows that you weren't, you weren't being a Brazilian. You were still given opportunities. Yeah. You were still trying to make peace. Mm-hmm. So that's why I just like, look, we, we did all we could do last year. Obviously, it went the way it, would, it, it, went the way it did. But we actually tried our hardest to have a peaceful year. Yeah honestly and i won't lie like i'm not like on my part i definitely didn't like with the wedding as i said like i was very sensitive like this is something that was important this was like a generational curse breaker type wedding like this was important and that's why when we've now reflected on it like and obviously prayed and stuff we've realized that there was a lot of battling happening yes that we didn't even realize Mm -hmm. and now it makes sense Mm -hmm. why because getting to this getting to this point of being married was actually a big feel the yeah. thing like it was a big deal and there was honestly that's why it felt like things were coming from everywhere <laughs> like something will be fine and then the next thing starts up mm-hmm. so yeah, yeah that's why even again like just internally planning the wedding there were just so many things like managing mm. all of the different vendors and, and even the bridal party the bridal party was great but obviously managing what 14 people 14 people that wasn't yeah easy, like, it's not easy 
it was so hard and I just feel like <sighs> some people could have done a lot more in yeah, terms of yeah. the, the little things they did yeah 100% like obviously for me like there was obviously one particular person in the bridal party that at the beginning especially when I was going through stuff with my siblings and my family like they were literally a phone call away like always there to listen to like make sure I'm okay like very very supportive but then after this now when they obviously were around I, I don't know like I just felt like things again were just not prioritized and I, yeah. I just don't know like I just kept feeling like why why is it with this wedding like what's right. what's wrong like why is nobody <sighs> but yeah so there was just like some priorities were just for, for me just weren't there mm -hmm. and obviously again as we've emphasized like our wedding yes it's our wedding at the yeah. end of the day and life does still go on mm -hmm. but i feel like when i'm giving grace for like someone dealing with a situation and then like i'm not feeling that they're like using as much of as much as what's the word like like not feeling like the effort. time the effort that they yeah. do have or mm -hmm. can gain they're not using it yeah. for me yeah. they're using it for like other places and yeah. then maybe giving me the last yeah. percentage yeah. then it's like hold on but i am using a hundred percent of myself <laughs> right now for you like there was a lot of like friction happening because of how like the dynamics changed because of how things were dealt with with this person mm -hmm. and again like i was defending like i was there to defend and i had so much understanding and grace and i just honestly felt like it's just this situation that's making things like this. Like it's not them. Like it's not. Yeah. It's not intentional. Mm -hmm. But then again, when I'm consistently like seeing that the efforts are being made, now I'm thinking, hold on, like it's starting to feel weird. Starting to feel like <laughs> yeah, it's starting to feel like. Do you want like I just mm. wasn't understanding what was going on, but mm. yeah. So that was a lot of letdown. I feel that burnt a lot more than actually my sibling yeah. because of how they this person was asleep been around to listen and see the stress that i went through before yeah so knowing that now to add more it just felt like honestly like yeah. you know especially how much this means to me and for mm. you to add a bit more just really hurt me but still anyway after that we did obviously have a conversation and i did actually fully express and the thing with me whenever someone hurts me or disappoints me i actually usually whenever i do express it mm. we end up not speaking anymore the relationship kind of completely changes not on yeah. my part but I think people just sometimes can't deal with like, what's the word, like criticisms or yeah, like they yeah. can't really deal with that sometimes or they don't know how to like mend things with me maybe. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but when I spoke to this person, I genuinely with all my heart actually was willing to fix it because they, mean, uh, they meant a lot to me. Like they literally was a very important person in my bridal party and in my life, like literally. Mm -hmm. But after that conversation, I just felt like, again, like the efforts to revive things or the efforts to like make things get back there. Because, yeah, they weren't where they w used to be, but they 100% can, like, things happen. Life mm -hmm. happens. Like, people can argue or have situations go up and down, but you just have to work and get back to where you were. Yeah. But if the effort's not coming from both people, then what's the point what's the point especially yeah. for me i'm seen as i've personally anyway maybe i'm wrong but i felt like because i'm the i was the victim in the situation i was the one hurt i can only give so much mm. and me even expressing and being in a place to at least accept anything you're willing to do mm. to fix things and then you still don't still do anything. that at this point i can't, can't i can't do anything else that just goes back to the boundaries where it's like for our piece we had to put those boundaries yeah cause because like you said you literally put it plain just any sort of effort to fix things when we find any sort of accountability just something mm. and when the, there's an absence of that it comes to start to feel like look clearly it's not what i thought it was let's yeah just like take, let's just take a step back just, then because and just leave it like that but yeah. and as much as obviously that is what you do that's not what i want to do yeah that is not like why would i want to get to a point where someone that means so much to me I'm now looking like here reflecting and the relationship has changed. Like we don't speak anymore. Like we're just there. Mm -hmm. Like it's not that we argued. Like we don't, even like everybody that obviously disappointed me wasn't an argument mm -hmm. where like we were f like fighting words. Yeah, no, like yeah. that's, that's not my character anyway. <laughs> but obviously like things just changed and I just had to protect myself because the hurt and I just mm. feel like a wedding, like, Obviously, people do say that when weddings happen, when you have a baby, like, you always realise certain always things about see, people yeah. and see things. But mm -hmm. I honestly was not <laughs> expected to see things at all. Like, yeah. I just was literally, I think that's what it was. That was carrying me along the wedding. I kept thinking, like, no, man, this can't be, like, what people say. <laughs> like, no, 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 no. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. But, mm -hmm. yeah, just now we're here. And obviously, like, it was a hard time. Like, we're definitely better now. But 
the grieving point of that like relationships changing and it's not easy like you don't i don't wake up plan a wedding and think that yeah i'm not going to speak to people after it literally that's not the plan like that's never the plan but Mm -hmm. but hey honestly like off the back of last year we're in such a better place now Mm -hmm. like like we'll issue our new show we'll issue yeah, have so many things come yeah. up as well that we can't wait for mm-hmm. so we've definitely moved past it we've had our closure yeah we've definitely we've prayed into a whole new yeah. sense of ourselves yeah so like it's only it's only up from here yeah and literally like we wish with everybody obviously as much as they hurt us like if they called us if they needed us to be honest without a doubt we'll actually be there for them yeah 100 percent. 100 percent. it's just that for our own peace and just for like to whatever is left in our relationships with any of them mm. we just need a step back yep. it's best to be like that or else it'll just yeah yeah so <laughs> like we said the wedding was a time it was, it was a, time. a time it was a time and it it was just like i said for me personally the most traumatic it was the most traumatic year of my life yeah. it was but mm. again i can only say the positives from it which was the fact that i can mm-hmm. now call you my wife yes and again, all the goodness is going to come from it. Yeah. Literally, definitely. our future, mm-hmm. like our, our eventual children, the, yeah. our house, the, the legacy Everything. we're able to yeah. build. That's, that's come from the wedding. So mm-hmm. that's, that's all I can take from it. Yeah, 100%. 100%. <sighs> and literally, I feel like everything's just always a learning curve in mm. life. Like, you never stop learning. Yeah. There's always things and situations and experiences that you do have to face to just keep moving forward in life and mm-hmm. to get stronger, really. Yeah. So, yeah, man, but we're here now. We're, here we're now. so much better. Well, we did feel like, obviously, we we're going to talk a lot about our relationship in yeah, the podcast. Yeah. So, we felt like, let's start from the wedding. The wedding. And then work our way backwards. Backwards. Because it may only makes sense, because, again, the wedding was the, the one thing that we've yeah. spoken so much about, but we actually haven't spoken, spoken about, about it. Yeah. So, yeah, I think yeah. it was the perfect first episode yeah. to start our, our podcast. Yeah, but definitely. As always, guys, like we cannot wait for this journey because mm-hmm. literally since 2020, we've been growing year on year. And yeah. We thank you all for your support along the way. Honestly. Like you've given us a platform to just be ourselves. Like, yeah, literally. Like that's literally. that's just a blessing. We oh, can just literally. be ourselves and yeah. people can, so, can support us for that. Yeah. Like we just cannot wait for episodes coming up. We have so much yeah. in store. We have yeah. so many conversations we want to talk yeah. about. Mm-hmm. I know I have questions for you. Yeah. <laughs> And I know you got questions for me. Yep. So yeah, yeah. just kind of wait to like kickstart this new chapter, this yeah, new journey. Definitely, definitely. We're gonna, we're gonna definitely have some guests on as well. Yes. We're gonna have a lot of perspectives on relationships, mm. not mm. just romantic. Like yeah. there's loads of relationships that we have in life. So yeah, mm-hmm. we're gonna really dig deep though. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. So as always, guys, we thank you so much. If you're watching us on YouTube, make sure yes. you like, comment, subscribe. Yes. And if you're listening on any Spotify, Apple, wherever you're listening to, <laughs> please continue to like it. Yeah. Give us, give us a review anything just help us continue to grow because yeah. yeah like we just can't wait for what's coming man yeah definitely as always guys i, I don't even have to sign it literally this is, like, this is different episode. like what can you say that like, well, thanks for not another relationship <laughs> I, I, I don't know but, <laughs> but yeah man we'll catch you in the next we'll episode catch you next, guys. <laughs>